Okay, so uh, now we want to talk about the abstract syntactic tree again. Um, and we're going to be essentially showing you examples, or I'll be showing you examples of how uh, various code should be represented in terms of our data structures that we defined to represent the code, right? To express the structure of the code. So what we have first is let's look at how values are implemented. Um, and you might recall that there is a structure to represent void. There's a structure to represent number. There's a structure to represent value, as these are the three kinds of values that we have so far. Um, and then what we have here is uh, three examples. So now what I would like you to try to do is how do I represent each of these values in Racket? using the data structures on the left hand side okay so maybe pause this video and try to give an answer for the three things and then i'll show you my solution and show you why uh, it's done that way okay so i hope you paused um, so the first one you see the number 10 so how would i represent the number 10 in my ast well it's a value so it's not a void and it's not a lambda so by exclusion could, could only be a number, right? Which makes sense. So how do we create that? We do it like so. We call our number, which is the construction of uh, the number value. And it takes one parameter, which is gonna be assigned to the field value. So when I create our number 10, I am holding, I am creating a representation of the number 10 and storing the contents of that number in this data structure. So similarly for void, what I'm doing is I'm just creating the an instance of void. And as you can see from here, void doesn't take any uh, arguments. So that's why I'm just calling it like so. And finally, I have a lambda. And a lambda deserves a bit more explanation. So I'm going to give you a few more examples of how would one go about and write a lambda. So the first example is this one where we have a lambda that uh, expects zero, exactly zero, uh, parameters and returns 10. So how would we go about and write that? Well, we would write it as our lambda and then a l an empty list, right? Because we have an empty list here. And then the body has to be a list because if you recall, the body of a function declaration is one or more terms. So I haven't seen how we haven't introduced terms yet. And as you might uh, recall, Notice this is a recursive definition, right? Where or mutually recursive because values are talking about terms and terms will talk about values. So there's no way around it. Um, so we'll postpone terms and for now we'll just focus on values because values are terms, right? So a simple example is the lambda that just returns 10 and we represent that with just a list and a single number 10. Right, so now I'm just gonna add a few additional examples. So first of all, I'm gonna open code AST examples dot bracket. Okay, I'm just writing the the usual. I need to do require. So as you can see here, I have uh, AST already, uh, the file AST, and this is what you'll see in your homework assignment. You'll also have access to that, so you can do. You need to do require ast dot racket, and in your homework template, you do have that require already. So there's nothing to be done for your case. Uh, and now I just call this racket ast dot racket, um, and I'm going I'm going to write the number of what each represents. Sorry, not the number, the expression. Okay. So now if I want, uh, the only one that really deserves explanation is the lambda. So let's say I want to write a lambda. Oh, first of all, let me just print out, print this out so that you're happy with me. Oh, not record AST. Okay, so in my examples, I have number 10, void, and a list with number. 
Okay, so now what I want to show is an example of how you write lambda, and it takes x, y, and z, and it returns 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so how would I represent that? Well, I would do r, r of lambda, right, which takes a list of, I haven't introduced variables, but if you look here, you will see, and we saw that before, so we saw that a variable, and this is an expression, um, a variable is one of such things. So let's do our variable x r variable. Let me indent this so that it looks a bit reasonable. Oh great. Finally r variable. Okay, and these are the parameters. Next field. So where is the lambda defined? Let's look here. Put it on the bottom. So a lambda, where is the lambda? Lambda, lambda is here. Second thing, second field is the body. So now this is going to be the lambda body. Okay, lambda body is a list. What is it going to hold? It's going to hold three things, one, two, and three. So let's do R number one, R number two, R number three. Okay, we close this, we close the variable declaration. Now we see another example where we have a lambda with three variables defined, or three parameters and a body that contains three numbers, right? Okay, so this is a more interesting example. So now we're, we're, we want to introduce or exemplify how would one represent uh, code expressions in terms of the AST. So let's look at this example. We have two examples. We have one that is just a variable and the second one, which is a function call. So how would you represent those in Racket? Try to do that and uh, pause the video. And when you're done, please resume. Okay, I'm gonna assume you already tried it. So the first one is pretty easy because we already did it, right? So let's copy paste these. I'm gonna close this down. Now I have two more examples. So how do we write each one? First one, of course, our variable, and we write of x, symbol x. Second one is r apply, right? So apply takes a function and the arguments, okay? So r call, no, r apply, sorry, r apply. First thing is a function itself. Second thing is function arguments. Okay, so function, it's gonna be uh, a variable called f, right? So our variable f, okay. And the argument's going to be a list. And in this case, we only have 10, right? So this would be list with our number 10, right? And we could also write another example of how would we parse um, something like this. That would be easy. We just copy paste this. And remove the number entirely. Another example, let's say we want to do something like we did before. Factory of 10, and we call it twice. So the function that we're calling is factory. And we're passing the R number 10. And this outermost represents so, sorry, this function call represents this expression, but then we want to call the result of that. We need to do an apply. Uh, the function is what's being returned. So this would be the function itself is this one. And the arguments, as we know, is empty. So function arguments would be an empty list. Okay, so let's 
run all these examples. Okay, so you have these. Uh, and finally, we get to terms. And if we wanted to write, um, so so this example is is actually the reverse of what we've tried so far. Is I give you this code, and I ask you to represent the equivalent racket code from it. So try to do that. Please pause the video and look at this example and try to obtain what is the racket code associated with this AST. So there are actually two, two uh, equivalent answers and they're both correct. As we know, in Racket, we don't have, when we talk about the AST, we don't have a way to distinguish. We don't want to distinguish between a basic definition and a function definition. So we want to represent them both with just a definition. Um, so either of these answers would be correct, where we have a, a define, where we're defining with a variable f, and then the body of the define is actually a function call um, that takes one parameter, right? And then in the body, there's a single thing, which is a function application, uh, and the function being applied is plus, and then the arguments are y and 10, which is why I have this. Okay, and this is the last uh, exercise. I hope you tried all of them and you were successful. If not, please ask questions. And I hope you have a good one.